at home in my garden and I'm going to show you how to transform your basic bird feeder into a rustic feed station that will change your garden bird photography from this to this absolutely free giving you spectacular photographic opportunities even with the smallest of gardens Watch to the end of the video and I'll show you my results from my two garden feed stations including my camera setup and the settings I used to capture the shots. I'll also show you how I keep the birds coming back year round plus how to have them come more often and stay longer. Hi I'm Ken Hatfield welcome to the Better Photography channel. So many of us have been forced to stay home recently and we simply haven't had the chance to travel around to enjoy our wildlife in the natural surroundings. Now, I don't know about you, but it's been driving me crazy. So I came up with the idea of setting up a bird photo opportunity right here in my own garden by transforming a bird feeder like this into a rustic feed station that will attract many more birds, have them return more often and stay longer. Now, I've set up a standard bird feeder behind me and I'm about to transform it into a feed station that can be adapted as the seasons change, giving year-round opportunities for great wildlife photography. You know, I've been observing birds in my garden for quite a while and I noticed that they always perch in bushes near to the feeders before flying in to eat. So I reckon that if I provided some natural perches closer to the food, it would be highly likely that I would use them giving me a good chance to photograph them in a natural setting, away from the feeders, with a nice soft background. Incidentally, for backgrounds, the key word here is separation. The ideal portrait has the bird separated from the background, which should just be a soft blur, showcasing the bird in the foreground. Now, I live in a small country cottage here in the UK, and space in my garden is quite limited, so I had to think very carefully how to set up the feeder to make sure that my setup would provide a good background for my images. And I'm going to share with you how I overcame the difficulties of limited space to show that anyone, even with a reasonably small garden, can capture images to be proud of. Free from distracting feeders with the birds separated in a natural pose in a lovely natural setting. And the first thing we need to do is find the materials necessary to show the birds at their best. So I'm going to use the existing feeder pole as a support and add another support nearby and then attach several old tree branches that I picked up at a local public woodland for the birds to perch before feeding. A, a note of caution though, please don't trespass on private land or take live branches. You'll find lots of interesting fallen branches in most public woodland areas. They don't take more than you need for your setup. A couple for uprights and a couple for cross branches. That's all you need. Don't cut anything from the trees. And to be honest, fallen branches are often much more interesting, especially if they're decaying or have a coating of moss on them. To stop boredom setting in by using the same setup over and over again, I change my setup regularly to reflect the seasons by adding seasonal branches and flower stalks. In spring, you can use the lovely tree blossom. In summer, use tall flower stalks and branches. Autumn brings wonderful golden leaves, fruit and berries, and winter sees frost and snow to add to your endless possibilities. It really is a great way to learn about exposure, shutter speed and aperture from the comfort of your own home. Right now, I'm off for a walk of our country lane to look for something I can use to encourage smaller birds to perch. Now this can be anything with small, narrow branches, perfect for the smaller birds to grasp onto. So what we really need is when we put our feed station here, we need to make sure that there's a fair distance between here and the back fence to make sure that we can then allow for the blurring background that we need. We need distance to get the bouquet in. Uh, so make sure you don't put it right next to a fence or right next to a bush because that will cause you problems. You'll not be able to get the blurred background. So I'll set mine right here, right in front of the, uh, the gravel area here. And what I'm going to do now is build up uh, the, uh, the feed station from scratch and we'll come back when it's done and I'll show you a few more tips on how to improve the um, number of birds that you're going to get in the garden and how are you going to get them to come back time and time again and stay for longer? So there you go, not too difficult eh? Just a couple of uprights, something coming across from the land on and what uh, I try to do is to add stuff in that is a bit seasonal. This is from up the lane 
it's just a bit of dried out cow parsley but I rather like I like the shade of the uh, of the branches and I like the uh, the fact that they're looking a bit old and a bit brown and dried uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them to the branches and hopefully this is where the, the smaller birds will come in and land before they come in to go into the feeders the interesting about the feeders is don't leave four feeders up there what you do is you, you put the feeders up and allow them to feed for a little while because it'll take a little while for the birds to get used to your new feeding station so don't think they're going to come straight in unless you're quite lucky it'll take a little while to be it'll be suspicious at first so take away i would say take away three of the four of those uh, so that makes them form a bit of a queue to get onto the feeder so that's when these should come into place here yeah, where you should be able to get the smaller birds perched on here and you should get a nice background from it so it's now been a couple of days since I built the bird feed station and uh, I think I can safely say it's been an unmitigated success. Literally the birds have been teeming in. I think a lot of it's down to the mealworms and the peanut butter mixture that I put out there which seems to be like some kind of crack cocaine for the birds. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you behind where I've actually pushed the peanut butter and the mealworms into the crevices and cracks on the branch, on the cross branch there. Um, and that's uh, brought the birds in and, and made them stay a wee bit whilst to dig it out, which is really nice. But they've also been using the uh, little branches up above to perch on whilst to wait to get to the feeders, which is great. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of photography now. Now, I would love to be able to shoot from out through my windows here, but unfortunately the angle's just not right. So I have a, a little hide there, which I've had for some while now, which I can dis disappear into, and hopefully we'll get some decent shots from there. So we'll pop in there now, see what we can get, and uh, I'll share some of the pictures in a montage in a few minutes when uh, we see what comes in to feed. So I'm in the hide now, and I'm going to do some a few preliminary shots. Um, I've set my uh, my settings up at 1600th of a second, f4.5, and because it's a grey overcast uh, day, I'm running at about ISO 2000. You're going to have to change your settings depending on, on the light. But I don't want to go much less than 1600 for these small birds that move very fast indeed. And this is the first shot I've taken off. Now that's okay, that's, a, that's not a bad little shot. I'll keep an eye on the light and I'll change my settings accordingly. So what I'm going to try and do now is get some interesting shots where they're on the branches, where I want them to be on the branches. I'm going to give you a little tip now. If you're going to try and do birds in flight, which is extremely difficult with these small birds, if there's an offshoot at all the top of the branch, you can actually see birds coming in and landing on a regular basis. Lock your focus onto the, the end of the branch and wait for them to come in. If you've got a remote shutter, use a remote shutter. you just got to watch for them then, and when you see them just about to take off, you press the shutter and you do the multiple shots and get as much as you can. Now, I get about 16 frames per second on the multiple shots, so I've got to be careful how I do that because it can very quickly run out of space. So you, you, with experience, you get to understand when they want to take off, when they're about to take off. They do certain things, evacuate the bowels just before they take off. They may twitch or look or call before they take off. Watch for repeated things that they do. And then when they come back in again, see that they're going to do that again and get ready to press the shutter button. But remember that one of the things that I did a lot at first, I released the shutter long before I needed to. So I missed out on some shots. I wanted to save space. I was worried about having masses and masses of shots on my card. So I ended up taking my finger off the shutter at a time when I would have got a better shot had I left it on for another second or two. So don't be frightened to keep the shutter down. You've got loads of space on your cards and uh, you can always delete stuff off at a later date. Uh, so try that. You know, the bird comes into a solo point on the top of the branch. If it keeps coming back into the same place, get ready, lock your camera off and get ready to shoot as soon as it appears to be going to take off again. So I've spent about half an hour out here. Not in the greatest of lights, but it's been a good opportunity to test out to make sure that uh, the actual setup I've got here will actually work and will attract the birds. And boy, has it attracted them in. So I've done a selection of shots there. I'm now going to show in a kind of a showreel. Just to show you what you can get with bits and pieces you've got to hand, collected from outside in the woodlands, whatever, put together, and you can actually do something that's a little bit better than just having them hang on a wire mesh on, on a bird stand. And uh, you have an opportunity to get the birds at least looking as if they're in a natural surrounding on a branch. It costs nothing, gives you lots of opportunity to take photographs, to practice. It's the most important thing of everything I'm telling anyone is actually to get out and practice what I'm showing you. Uh, practice, practice, and eventually it will become second nature to you and you will get better photography. You will get better at your photography and you will get better results. And that's all we want for you on a better photography channel. 
So let's get going and see what we can get with these small branches. Wish me luck. some questions in so I'm going to answer my first weekly question here it's from John Griffiths in Manchester basically he's asked me what equipment I'm going to be using today to take these bird shots what I have here is a Canon 1DX Mark III and a 500 millimeter f4 Canon lens uh, all of my gear for weddings and for wildlife all Canon gear occasionally use a 1.4 extender which is useful for uh, just getting a little bit extra range uh, I sometimes use a two times extender, but I would recommend against that for any shots where the bird or the animal is moving. It's not too great at tracking. I've not have had a great deal of success. It is very good, however, if the bird or the animal is static and still. Um, you can get the range and you can get some good shots. I use a sturdy tripod and uh, a good gimbal here to hold it nice and tight and, uh, and safe. Um, and um, basically, it's, it's stand me in good stead. Uh, on this type of range, I, I could use, uh, I've got a Canon 5D uh, and I could put my Canon 7200 uh, lens, which is a, my fabulous go-to lens. It's amazing. It's 2.8 and it gives you the most amazing blur in the background. And you can, of course, use the extender on that. But this would be the one I would, I'd usually take when I go to Africa or to America um, to try and get the best shots possible. But thank you for that question. And we'll have another one next week. So don't forget to join me next week. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. I'm off to the North Yorkshire Moors, photograph the ground birds, pheasant and grouse. Still maybe got some youngsters about as well. And uh, there's lots of curlew and lapwing up there who tend to fly around a wee bit. So we get an opportunity to do some birds in flight as well. So hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so that you get a reminder when it's posted. And we'll see you next week. Take care.